gonna walk you through uh, a job here. So customer wants me to power rake, to aerate, and do a first cut on this lawn. I already did the front, but couldn't get through the gate because it had a lock on it. So I got a key for the lock. And uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna walk you guys through this one. Here's the gate, there's the lock. I got a key now. And uh, see if I can get some footage of me power raking and aerating and doing the first cut. So uh, stay with me. So first you want to walk the yard, make sure uh, there's nothing you're going to hit. I did ask the customer if they had a sprinkler system. Uh, and I tried to find where the, uh, the city water shutoff valve is. A little, little metal uh, thing in the lawn. You don't want to hit that with the power raker aerator. Could damage your aerator. Or, you know, you could damage the the uh, shutoff valve. Sometimes they're in the alley, but this is the lawn here. There's my power rake. You can see there's a lot of like dead grass and I don't know some mulch and dead leaves and everything so good power rake is gonna gonna make the lawn look nicer um anyway so i didn't find anything i did a good walk and uh i'm just gonna go ahead and get started
coming down pretty hard. I just vacuumed up all the uh, all the dead grass and all the thatch and everything. Put it onto the tarp. So I'm glad I got that done because uh, you don't want a power rake in the rain. It was dry when I started, so because uh, if you power rake in the rain, with the, if the grass is wet, you'll just end up tearing up the lawn. So you want to be careful. You don't want to make you know you don't want to tear up the lawn. So. Anyway, I got everything up, but I'm not going to let this nice weather stop me from finishing the job. I still got a weed whack and, uh, and then aerate and, uh, you know, nothing's stopping me from doing that right now. A little bit of rain is uh, good for the soul. So anyway, maybe I'll take some footage of me aerating. Here we go. I'm all done guys uh, you know it, it did rain on me but uh, the main thing is I got it done I got all the air the power raking done first um, then it doesn't matter if you're if you're if you're aerating in the rain it's not gonna bother anything if not it, it's gonna make things actually a little bit better because uh, you know the you don't want to aerate over dry soil you won't pull up good plugs uh, you can do it don't get me wrong but uh, you get your best results after a rain or something like that. And uh, sometimes my customers will leave in um, the water lawn if they know I'm coming uh, the next day. So, um, so anyway, it's a new customer I picked up this year. Um, he wants a weekly service. Um, I power raked and aerated his property for $150. Um, I got it done in probably an hour and 15 minutes um, front and back um, it's good money I mean these ma these machines aren't cheap so you have to charge to make up for some of the money that you lose in the cost of the machine so um, but in a good day you can make a lot of money aerating if you're just aerating or if you're power raking aerating you can make a thousand dollars a day um, it's hard for me because I don't want to have to go door to door with coronavirus right now um, otherwise uh, I would be I would be going door-to-door -door and people want the service sometimes people even will, will come out of the house and if I'm doing a neighbor's yard they'll say hey will you will you do mine too and so that's always nice because you're right there um, but big thing is always ask the customer if they have a sprinkler system or irrigation system ask them where the water valve is the city water valve um, sometimes they don't know so you sometimes you'll have to look and oftentimes they'll flag their sprinkler systems or their their main water valve um, and then after that it's up to you just do a good job make sure you pull uh, you know make just w look over the job sometimes you can miss a spot at the end of the, at the end of the day you just want to at the end of your job just look over the yard make sure you got everything uh, you don't want to have to be called back to do a small area or something like that because you missed it um, 
I'm just trying to think of what else I can give you advice on here. Um, in my area, I guess I can charge $75 for aeration. I live in Alberta, Canada, High River. Um, so in this area, it's common for like a $75 aeration, $100 for power raking. Um, and I suck it up with the, uh, with the lawnmower. Yeah, it's easy just to power rake everything and then suck up all the thatch with the lawnmower. I've got a bigger lawnmower, it's a Time Master, so it can, uh, you, you don't have to make so many trips to the tarp. Uh, you can make a lot of passes with the Time Master and then what I do is I put all my clippings and everything onto the tarp and then um, I'll take the tarp away. And you don't want to leave the thatch on the grass or anything. So you can rake it up if you want, you can blow it all into the middle and collect it that way if you want. Um, there's just ways of doing it, everyone has their own way. I just like to, I like to pick it up with a lawnmower in the bag and then and then put it on a tarp and then take it away. Uh, I know some, some, some places they'll, you can put it right in their, gar their recycle bin. I don't do that, we don't have that kind of service here in, in my town, so. Um, anyway, if you figure it out, but, uh, but yeah, so I guess that's all there is I have to say about that. Um, if there's anything else, maybe I'll add it in later, but that's power rake and then, and then cut the lawn and then aerate. So, um, yeah, so you, the reason why you, you have to power rake first is so that you don't get, so you don't get any thatch or anything in the uh, in the plug holes with the uh, aeration. So if you aerated first and then you dethatched everything, all the little thatch grass and everything else would fall into the little holes that you made with the aerator. So power rake and then aerate. Um, I always cut too because I'm already going over the lawn with the with the mower, and um, so it's kind of just easier for me. But uh, Anyway, so 150 bucks is what I charged. Um, like I say, about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Uh, it doesn't take long if you if you know the system and you can do it quick. Um, so, so that's it. Uh, bought my. Oh, actually, we'll say I bought my my aerator. I bought that used. That cost me 600 bucks. That little DR aerator is uh, is almost like a. And I've never even seen it before before I bought it. I I have used the heavier aerators and they really suck. They can really put a toll on your body. This one you just walk behind it and it just you move it around. It, it weighs probably weighs about a hundred pounds, but or more. But uh, it's not that hard to uh, you know to maneuver. It's just really easy. It takes you a little bit longer, but not much. So anyway, keep your eyes out for used equipment. Uh, it's, it's always a gamble, but like I said, I bought that one for 600 bucks, and I bought that two years ago, and I've probably done over 50 lawns with it. Um, and then my power rake, that one I bought new because that's the Husqvarna power rake. It's an awesome power rake. Uh, it was on sale for $16.99 here in Canada. Um, our prices in Canada are ridiculous. Uh, like for a Toro Time Master, that 30-inch mower that I have, that costs fifteen hundred dollars in Canada. Uh, if you were to buy that in the states, you'd only be charged a thousand bucks, and we pretty much charge the same price as you guys in the states do. So we're getting uh, we have to pay a lot more for equipment, and that's right across the board. Like um, I don't know what I would compare it to, like a, say a steel uh, steel seventy FS. You're looking at almost 400 bucks, and I think you guys can get it down the stage for like 250 or something like that. And bigger equipment is way more expensive. So there's a lot of tariffs, um, and just the dollar difference, the states to Canada, the dollar difference really drives up the price. So uh, just consider yourself lucky down in the states down there. Um, anyway, I'm kind of getting off track here, but uh, so I'm gonna wrap this up. Anyway, have a great day, guys, and. You know, always believe in yourself. Always think, I can do this, you know. Uh, I got my motivation from uh, my faith in the Lord. And I think, you know, His Holy Spirit living inside me maybe uh, maybe uh, motivates me in a, in a way. And um, so, 
but you know what i uh i just i think it's doable for everybody who uh who just want, has a desire to do it and uh so just be smart don't get it over your head and um always uh try and keep a positive attitude well until next time guys